I suppose you could call this part one of a two-part series. I'm going to be looking at a couple of cartridges from a company called Samico. This particular one I'm looking at today is called the Songbird. It's the dearer of the two cartridges I'll be looking at this week. Priced at, what, five pennies short of £900. It's a moving coil, yes, but it's also a high output moving coil. Now, I had the choice of the low output version, because there is a low output version, but I preferred the high output version. Let's say you're on the upgrade path, and let's say you've got to the stage where you've got quite a nice moving magnet cartridge attached to your turntable, somewhere around, say, four, five hundred pounds. You've got to that sort of level. Now, if you upgrade to a high output Samico Songbird, you won't have to change your phono amplifier because being high output, it basically runs on the moving magnet settings in your phono amplifier. This means that you don't have to upgrade your phono amplifier if you only have a moving magnet phono amplifier to hand, that is. So a high output moving coil is pretty useful in those terms. Now, if you look at the design itself, the Songbird has that naked look, I suppose you'd call it. Basically, you can see all the innards, all the workings going on inside. Now, this is a design decision adopted by a fair few cartridge companies out there. I can think of Benz and its glider, for example. I can think of Vanden Hull and its Stradivarius model. I've got one of those myself. And the idea of the sort of naked cartridge look is to, well, bin the chassis. It's to get rid of the chassis. The idea being that if you get rid of the chassis, you also remove elements of vibration, which the chassis may or may not give you, which degrades sound quality. So get rid of the chassis, get rid of the vibrations, up the sonic quality. That's the theory, at least. Now, because there is no chassis per se, what Samico has done is they've grabbed all the innards of the Songbird and bolted them to a top plate, quite a thick aluminium top plate in this particular case. The Songbird sports a coated aluminium cantilever supported by a synthetic rubber suspension system plus copper wired coils. At the end of the cantilever is an elliptical stylus. Now, this is an interesting design choice by Samico. Very intriguing indeed. It's using an elliptical stylus on a 900 pound cartridge. You don't often see this. Well, you do, but not very often. I can think of, what, six, seven cartridges in this price range, which will use a more exotic stylus tip, shall we say. Now, there is a reason that Samico gives. If you look in the instruction manual for this particular cartridge, there's a reason that Samico gives for using an elliptical stylus tip. And it said this, unlike some designs, even if it's not adjusted within a Nats whisker of perfection, your cartridge will still deliver an intensely musical experience. So basically what Samico is saying here is that it's including an elliptical stylus tip to give you top quality sound. So you don't have to be there hours micro tweaking this cartridge to fine tune it and to spend, well, an awful lot of time trying to get the nth degree of sonic value from this cartridge. It's basically saying that an elliptical tip will give you a great sound from the off. You don't have to spend too much time tweaking it. You don't have to spend too much time messing around with settings. The elliptical tip gives you a broad base good quality sound, so you can basically plug and go and you can get on with listening to your records, which is the point of this whole exercise, isn't it? Now, the issue I have with this is, if you're the sort of person who's going to spend £900 on a cartridge, surely you don't mind tweaking. Surely you don't mind getting the best out of an exotic stylus tip in the first place. Surely that's part of the point of a £900 cartridge to get the very best out of it. But that's more of an observation. It's not really a criticism of Samico for this particular design decision. It's okay. At least Samico have come down on one side of the fence. At least Samico appears 
to have just made the decision and are getting on with it. And it's up to you whether to accept it or not. But, you know, that's the way it is. That's the way we've set out our stall. So you either like it or you don't. End of story. But if only it was that. If only Sumiko did say that. Because they haven't. They seem to have muddied the waters here. There seems to be a little bit of indecision. Let me explain. Firstly, they say, Sumiko, firstly, they say, here's an elliptical stylus tip. Easy to set up. Plug, go, listen. By adding the elliptical stylus tip, that seems to be what they're saying. In the instruction manual, that quote I've just given you seems to back that up. Now, if the company stopped there, then all would be well. I would call that a brave decision by Sumiko, but I would admire them for making a brave decision. But there seems to be some indecision. Because later on in the manual itself, just under where it talks about ease of use and ease of setup and ease of installation, it then goes on about things like azimuth and rake angle. It's fairly advanced. It's not really, here's an elliptical tip, ease of use, plug and go, get on, listen to your vinyl type talk. It's almost a contradiction in terms. Again, I have no issue with Sumiko wanting to guide you through a complex installation setup routine, talking about rake angles and azimuth and all the rest. I have no problem with that. In this case, it just seems slightly incongruous. It seems to clash. They seem to be saying, here's an elliptical tip, here's an easy to set up cartridge. Oh, and incidentally, here's some highly complex installation instructions for you, for advanced users. They don't seem to blend. It gives the impression when you read the manual that they don't really know which direction they want to take. I can almost imagine a less experienced user picking up a songbird, seeing that it's got an elliptical stylus tip, thinking, okay, that's quite friendly. Seeing the beginning of the instruction manual talking about ease of installation, thinking, okay, that's nice. And then freaking out when they're reading about negative rake angle. But hey, maybe the issue is all with me. Maybe I'm just reading too much of this. Maybe. And generally for these self-same instructions, I would have liked far more images, sketches and hand-holding drawings in the instructions rather than the basic obtuse thumbnail samples provided. The setup is also far too wordy, although it is nice and chatty and folksy in many ways. Weighing in at eight and a half grams with a frequency response of 12 hertz to 40 kilohertz, the recommended tracking force is two grams. Now for sound tests, I picked up a Peggy Lee jazz orientated LP. That's Lee vocals fronting a full orchestra behind her. And what I did for my reference is I grabbed a high output moving iron design called the Aladdin which is a collaboration between Sandsmith and Origin Live. Now, I did note that despite both designs being high output, there was a difference in gain right from the beginning. I had to apply more gain to the Songbird to get to the same volume. The initial playback was intriguing because I thought that the Songbird was efficient in the bass regions without over-egging this frequency. That is, the bass guitar exhibited its twang and then the guitar reverberated downwards from that point. Now, bass was certainly there, of course, but the focus and precision were not an overriding factor in the lower regions. Bass preferred to do its work and sit neatly within the mix. Now, this is how I like to hear my bass. I wanted to do its work without dominating. I wanted to occupy areas it should without getting ideas above its station. And I also wanted to illuminate percussion, bass guitar and the like without blooming all over the place. The Songbird managed to do just that. In fact, it did that in a surprisingly subtle manner. During the first few minutes of play, I actually wondered if bass was lacking until I realized that bass was performing in a nimble, mobile fashion without any bloating fat. Let's not ignore the upper regions though. The Songbird enjoyed working around the mid-range and treble bands too. The upper frequencies were intriguing. Compared to other similarly priced designs, I thought that the upper frequencies offered more and possibly less. Swings and roundabouts, you might say. 
Now what I mean by that is there was plenty of detail, lots of air and space, but the action was brought pretty close to you. The upper frequencies were pulled nearer to the ear. You felt that you were closer to the action. Violins were full of breath, percussion was busy, and flute was spacious. There seemed to be a constant movement of air around the upper frequencies, which offered clarity and transparency and plenty of detail. Now, if you ever do get to demo Samiko Songbird, one or two of you might say, well, I thought the upper mids and the treble was a bit soft. I don't necessarily think the upper frequencies are soft. I think what's happening is, is that the music is being brought close to you and it's being brought so close to you, you're so in the action that you're losing a bit of focus. You're losing a bit of precision. Just, do you know what I mean? If you, if you look at, say, a painting and you get too close to it, there's a little bit of out of focusness going on here. If you look at something at a distance, you can see all the edges a lot easier. Focus is a lot easier to achieve. The details are more precise. And because you don't see the edges, because you don't see the edges of the instruments, you don't see the edges of the vocals, because you're right up close to the action, some people might find that slightly frustrating. In some ways, you're getting close to that action, you're getting right in amongst the detail, you're actually gaining more information. But it's a bit like a telescope. You're getting more information from the center of the sound. You're not getting all the focus and precision that's around it. You're not getting the context, if you see what I mean. Now, on the other hand, other cartridges give you the focus and the precision but they can sometimes lack emotion and feel, which can result in a slightly sterile and dry presentation. And hey, at least the Songbird offers a choice. It's highly entertaining and rather wonderful because the Songbird emotes. It's different from much of the competition because of that. So this cartridge can never be described as a Me Too design. What it does, it offers an alternative. Turning to the Cures, Pornography and the track Figurehead, bass was not massy or full of heft, hence very low frequency implementation was lacking a tad. Bass was notable for its movement rather than its foundational tone, for example. The Songbird had no issues in being both incisive and detailed around the midband. This quite complex and busy track, which was slightly dark in tone and sometimes sounds like the music is emerging from down a deep hole, was lightened enough by the songbird to reveal even rather shy synth spots at the rear of the mix. Similarly, the lead vocal can sometimes sound a little subsumed into the mix, but here, via the songbird, this vocal was lifted, offering enough detail to add a sense of richness to the overall song. So what do I think of the Samiko songbird? Well, the songbird gives you emotion, it gives you feeling, it gives you heart, it doesn't give you precision, it lacks a bit of focus, it's not really analytical, it's all heart, it's all emotion. Now some people will love that, some people will love the emotion it gives, other people, well they might think, no I prefer some focus and precision here. This is the sort of cartridge that will divide opinion. Some people will be frustrated that it's not giving the precise details, the quality of information that they expect, while others will love the fact that it just gives you the soul of the music. It just oozes emotion. But nevertheless, this is an intriguing and wholly fascinating design, and I enjoyed reviewing the thing. But that's all from me. I'm done, and I will see you in the next video. Join me then, and until then, bye bye for now.